When it comes to building a house, the roof is usually the hardest thing to do. However, it's not going to be that hard if you use one of these roofs that require the same roof rafter pattern, the same design, one pattern that you can use to lay out all of the rafters in that house. And you don't have to do it exactly like I have it here. You don't need an overhang for a shed roof. However, I do recommend a seat cut. I know a lot of people are like, no, I'm not putting a seat cut in my shed roof. Well, knock yourself out. I like the preferred methods for building that carpenters have been using for decades and maybe even centuries. And of course, a shed roof is going to be easier to build than a gable roof. However, the good news again, you only need one rafter pattern. The rafters on each side should be exactly the same. And again, you can lay out the tops and bottoms differently if you need to. So again, gable roof rafter, the one that's going to be on this side, is going to be the exact same rafter as the one on this side. Again, making your job a little easier. And that's the main point I'm trying to drive home in this video. And for those of you crazy builders out there who are looking for something different, you might want to build something like this. And this is often referred to as a butterfly roof design. And I would imagine that's because it looks like it has two wings, one on each side. However, in this example here, you will be using the same rafters for each side, but you will need to modify the ends. These rafters are going to be a little different. However, I don't expect it to be difficult enough for you to figure out how to cut them. And I will be making another video. I do not have a video on this in my garage building series. And I would definitely recommend you checking those out at our website. And to get there, you can click on the Home Building tab, then the Garage tab, and then you should come to a list of different types of roof framing for a two-car garage like we have here. So here you can see where the rafters are sitting on top of the beam. You can always lower the beam if you need to or raise it or rotate the roof 90 degrees so that the beam is not sitting on top of the garage door header. And there you have it, three different types of roofs that you can build by figuring out the length of one rafter. In this video, I will provide you with the most common math formula that I used in the construction industry, and it's used to figure out the length of the longer side of a right triangle, or a triangle with a 90 degree angle in it. And it's a common math formula for used for figuring out the length of a roof rafter. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we're actually going to need in the math formula. So we are not going to know what the C side is, but we are going to need to know what the A and the B sides are going to be. And a lot of times for a, when you're figuring out a roof rafter, you're going to have a five and 12 pitch, for example. And I believe that's about 22 and a half degrees. And this is going to be, this means that for every 12 inches, or every 12 feet that the rise is going to go up five feet for 12 feet and if it's a one foot increment then it's going to go up five inches so for every one foot the rise is going to be five inches and if we have that we have these measurements we can figure out the length of this by just simply having these two numbers Next up on the list, let's take a look at the formula. And again, I'm going to kind of go through this. You can stop it, pause it, you know, grab a piece of paper and a calculator and work some of this stuff out on your own and, you know, start the video up and go forward, go backwards, whatever you need to do to drive this into your noggin there. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. This is the Pythagorean theorem. And it's no more than multiplying A times A. This is side A. And this formula works just fine if, you, if this is side A and this is side B. So in this, for our example, we're using this is side A and this as side B. 
So 5 times 5 equals 25. We got to multiply this number by itself to get it to get it squared. And then 12 times 12 equals 144. This is side B. And if we add these two numbers together, 25 plus 144, we get 169. And then if we calculate the square root of 169, we get 13. The length of this side, side C, would be 13. Here is a calculator I found on the internet. You might have one at home. You might have one on your computer that you use. And most of us know how to multiply numbers together to find the square. If I multiply 5 times 5, then that's going to be 25. So that's not difficult to do. Clear that. 12 times 12 equals 144. We add 144 plus 25, we get 169. Now, to find the square root of 169, all we need to do is push the symbol that is going to represent the square root of the number that we had when we added the side A squared and side B squared together. So. The square root is just simply the reverse of squaring a number. So if we were to multiply 13 times 13, we're going to get 169. So I hope that makes sense. You're just reversing the process by using the square root symbol. Now I want to point out that if you have a calculator and you don't know what the square root symbol is, simply put a number in like 4 and push one of these numbers and then push the equal sign and you got two so it looks like you can use either one of these i'm not familiar with this calculator what it uh, does or doesn't do my calculator just has the square root symbol on it without anything else and yours might also but again it, this if you're trying to find it you don't know which one it is just simply put a number in that you know multiplies together so for example nine 3 times 3 is 9. Square root of 9 is going to be 3. So just a tip for trying to find the button there if you don't know which one it is. In our last example, I wanted to throw out one more thing, and that is that you can use inches instead of feet. It might be easier for you, and it's easier for me to use inches instead of feet. So, you know, 5 foot converts into 60 inches. You're just going to multiply 60 times 60, a times a to get a squared, and just follow the same process through that I just showed you in the previous section. So that is it for the video. I wanted to uh, make this video because I am going to be using it in other videos I'm planning on making in the future. So I'm going to make some videos on how to figure out complicated roof systems, rafters, hips, and even stairs. So there's a lot of things you can use this theorem for. If you do enough construction or you're in the construction industry, make sure that you familiarize yourself with this formula because you're not going to believe how many times. Uh, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I came to a job and the carpenters had no idea what I was doing. And I'm like, wow, you know, I just I found it hard to imagine. Some of that stuff you're not going to see today because somebody can pick up a phone, pump in a couple of numbers, and they are done with it. So I understand that this video might not be as important as it would have when I was first starting out in construction.